and welcome to the Strumzy Community Call of 5th October 2023. The first thing on the agenda are some open PRs and issues. Uh, I edit there two issues which someone opened. Uh, I think this PR adds some additional configurability to the listeners. I'm not sure I fully understand the usefulness of that. So I already before asked the author if we can a bit more explain why is this needed. It's also missing unit tests and so on. But there was no feedback yet on it. Does anyone have any thoughts about it? So should we just reinforce what I said in my comments or? I think we should wait for his response, maybe. Well, it's but five days already. That's quite a long time. I guess we could wait another few days. I mean, five days, but be is busy with something else. Beyond PTO, yeah. Okay. What about the next one? To be honest, I'm not sure I see this PR as really useful because you can now add any environment variables to the cluster operator deployment. So I'm not sure why you would need some special fields for these two options. So I'm not an expert of Elm charts, but I see that you are suggesting that uh, he can achieve the same thing using these values, extra SEMs, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I don't see why we should add two specific environment variables in the, in the chart. Yeah, I agree with that. So should we close it or? Uh, how many days? Still five days. Yeah, I would say we can just close it because you already answered the. So already provided another solution. Okay. Anyone has any other PRs and issues they want to discuss? Okay, if not, there are 
two proposals I wanted to raise. One is a new one, which I opened about the craft upgrades and downgrades. So if that's something you are interested in, please have a look. And another one, which I wanted to point out was the one about rolling the craft controller node, which seems to be getting some approval. So uh, might close the world soon. So if this is something you are interested in, please have a look. And, uh, and uh, yeah, leave comments or approve or comment and so on. On uh, proposal 91, um, I realized that there's part of it was slightly ambiguous. Um, I don't think we need to resolve it here, but just a heads up, I've added a comment tagging Luke to see what he thinks. But um, for those who have already approved it, at the moment, the calculation where we talk about deciding whether we can roll a controller, what we've written is um, we're going to count each controller that, that is caught up, including the leader. I think we should only be counting the leader if we're not planning to roll the leader. If we're trying to roll the leader, I don't think we should count it as being caught up. Um, but we can discuss on on the proposal, but just a heads up that I think that's slightly ambiguous at the moment in the proposal. So I think we probably want to clarify that before we merge it. But it links to what you were asking about on the PR, Jacob. Yeah, I'm not sure I follow this discussion. I would expect that we need majority of nodes to be always caught up regardless of leader or not leader. Yeah, I think the I think the reason including the leader is written is because we should include the leader in how many have been caught up. But at the moment in the implement, I think I think you could read that sentence in two ways. You could read it as we always include the leader as one of the caught up controllers, or you can read it as if you're trying to restart a follower, then you count the other followers that are caught up. And of course the leader's caught up because it's the leader. So I feel like it could be read two ways. But if you need to ensure that a majority is online, the leader is part of the majority, right? Yes. So I think if we're restarting the leader, then we need. So if we've got, if we've got three nodes, and we're trying to restart the leader, we need both of the other two to be caught up in order to restart the leader. Yeah. Exactly. Well. But you need basically, if you have three nodes, you should probably do rolling update only when you have all three nodes caught up or? Yes. Like in theory, if you have one node which is not caught up, you can restart one node which is not caught up itself. But I would go for simple logic that you simply don't touch the quorum unless you have the majority plus one caught up. Yeah, so at the moment, the way we have implemented it is we're basically doing the first thing you said, which is we will roll a node that's not caught up, assuming the rest of them are all caught up. So if you've got three, it, it will roll the follower that isn't caught up. I think that's probably fine in general, it's just more complicated logic than needed, probably. Potentially. I mean, it's it's not like with the brokers, we're in the cluster with 10 brokers and hundreds of partitions with replication factor three, you have all kinds of combinations. Here you will basically have something like three or five controllers. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I wonder if it's worth having the complexity in the code to kind of try to figure out, oh, do I have the majority and is this node part of the majority or not part of the majority and so on, because like normally I would expect you should be able to do the rolling update even without that. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of complexity of the code, actually, 
whether or not you count the current pod you're restarting doesn't make the code that much more complex. The complexity is whether or not you've got a majority rather than how many pods you've taken into account when you worked out the majority. Yeah. It's only simpler if you only roll pods if all of them are caught up. But yeah, I think that clarifies though. And I I think the current open PR is wrong. So I'll change that. Okay. Anyone has anything else, any proposals? If not, I think we have some issues for triage. Uh, so this one is actually not a new issue, but it was unblocked by the cruise control feature being implemented uh, for the being able to move all data between from one disk to another disk within the same broker. So I guess this is something interesting because of the user interest, but probably should have a proposal or something as that it will involve API changes and so on. Yeah, I agree. I think that's something that we should have to have. Not sure how much is priority right now, but. Okay, so needs proposal. Should we add help wanted to it or should we leave it as it is? I don't know if you or Kyle or anyone had already some thoughts about it and wants to work on it or if we should leave it open for the time being. Well, on my side right now, I don't think that I will have time to work on it. So not sure. I'd leave it open. I... I'll, I'll get to it, but I don't know when, but leave it open for now in case someone wants to save me the work. Okay. And this doesn't need triage anymore. Okay, another issue. Is this one, Kyle, I think last time we didn't have you on the call, so we were waiting for you. Yeah, the, the user's gone cold. Uh, I just pinged him now, um, but from the evidence that he provided, it seemed to be a, an issue with this cloud provider, like his disks. And so where we left off a month ago was he was going to double check and get back to me, um, but I'm still waiting to hear back. Um, so I, I mean, I don't know what the process with this is. We could close it and have him reopen it if he had um, definitive evidence, if it was a Strimzy issue. Yes, we should but close think, it. It's already month since the last command. Yeah, I, I, I would. I think we should close it. And if I get evidence that it would be a streams issue, then we can reopen it or open a new issue. Sounds reasonable. Okay, I guess. Okay, next one.
not sure it's really clear from Tom's comment what is he proposing. Should we postpone it for the next call or maybe Tom will be able to join? So it's not clear me neither, but as far as understood, it's going to be eventually fixed in the unidirectional topic over either, right? This problem. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I follow it, to be honest. He says that similar thing can be done in the user operator, but the user operator doesn't have this problem. Mm -hmm. The user operator and the unidirectional topic operator, they should have the label which defines to which cluster the topic belongs, and they should not have any issue with two clusters in one namespace fighting for the same resources because the label can have only one value and defines it clearly. Yeah. So I'm not sure what he meant by this. So I guess we should postpone it for next time. Okay. Okay. So this is some bug with some error from some serialization and deserialization libraries. And I'm not, it doesn't seem to me like it has any relationship to streams. Yes, we don't do anything with serialization and deserialization, and we don't provide any, any schema registry support or anything. So I guess maybe we should close it and suggest the user to open a discussion if he just wants some help about it. But I don't think this is a streams bug. Yeah, I agree. I think that it should go to some, I don't know, I see it's a confluent component. Some confluent related co forum. Okay, next thing is something what the user opened and that's adding support for resetting the offsets for Kafka Connect connectors, which I think is a new feature in uh, 3.6, I think. Mikhail will probably know. That's right, it's new in 3.6. To me, it wasn't completely clear what would be the use case, and it's more command than a declarative thing, so how it would be used. But if there is some interest on that from the users, then maybe 
we can have it and we should just have a proposal to clarify the, the value and how should the API look like and so on. Yeah, I agree. I think this is the proposal. So uh, I, I considered, I mean, I looked at this briefly when I uh, did support for stopping connectors that it's uh, this and stopping connectors are the same keeping Kafka. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as you said, it's uh, it's really a, a one-time action. Uh, so it kind of in the, the shape is a bit like a rebalance, basically. Uh, so you would have to define how you declare this in a, in a declarative manner and in Strinzy. And uh, uh, yeah, this needs a proposal to figure out how and what's the best way to expose it. I think that's a useful feature. So, uh, I mean, users can still access the REST API directly, but uh, uh, having some way to support it, I think, would be nice. Okay, so we keep it, but it should have a proposal, right? Okay, needs triage, needs proposal. Do we want to mark it as help wanted or? Yeah, I have no plans to work, no plan to work on this now. So uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, otherwise, uh, yeah. Help would be useful here. Okay. Oh, welcome. <laughs> and I guess the last issue is from you, Paolo. Yeah, so I think that we had the kind of discussion uh, around this back in, in August. So um, with our open telemetry support that we have today in our component, Kafka Connect, Mirror Maker, uh, Bridge, things like that, uh, you Actually, you are not able to connect to a uh, open telemetry endpoint, like even a Jaeger backend, for example, so a tracing system, which is TLS enabled on uh, on its uh, on its side. Uh, the reason is um, you can see here on the on the issue that uh, you can set uh, this hotel exporter OTLP certificate environment variable, and you need the path to the um, CA certificate or the certificate that was used to sign the certificate on the Jaeger or tracing system backend. That's because we have this general uh, issue that we cannot uh, mount random secret with certificates in, uh, in our pod, right? Uh, so I was just wondering if uh, we want to go this way. I mean, uh, thinking if it's uh, fair to allow somehow mounting uh, secret with um, other certificates or uh, we'll just keep saying because people so have a workaround which is using uh, an open telemetry collector in the middle you are connecting on one side without tls and the open telemetry collector which is not handled by stream Z, it will be deployed by you so you can mount the secret that you want and on the other side connecting via tls to the jaeger backend of course, not having this component in the middle, maybe it's better because it's kind of, we are supporting open telemetry, but uh, missing uh, something that you can enable in the open telemetry SDK through the environment variable. 
So that was just, yeah, to start discussion. The, 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 the piece that is missing here that we need to mount somehow is secret with the, the certificate we need. I, I tried this on OpenShift uh, because OpenShift um, allows you to deploy the overall uh, uh, open telemetry, well, distributed tracing thing. And uh, it, it um, as the Jaeger endpoint de deployed with the TLS enabled and uh, a certificate used for sign is even mounted on your site, on your pod, which is the service CI certificate. So you have the secret already there and you can, can just consume. But of course it f works uh, well. I tried on OpenShift, but it works if uh, it's signed by this cent service CA certificate. But if the user is using another certificate for signing the Jaeger TLS endpoint, then um, yeah, you cannot mount it in, the, in Kafka Connect in this case, for example. So I think we didn't have it for open tracing either. And well, I'm not sure uh, for anyone open tracing, complained. Yeah, for, for open tracing, the problem was uh, totally different in the sense that open tracing was actually not supporting TLS at all. It uh, was supporting TLS as well. Well, uh, if you see, there is uh, an issue uh, that I closed instead of this. There were some problems that they were not uh, covering because moving to open telemetry and because open tracing was archived. Uh, I should find the, the issue that was closed. So I know that we removed the support for open telemetry, but I think the issue there was the same. It was just that Jaeger, which we used, always had an unencrypted port as well. Yeah, but now the problem is uh, uh, so, okay, but so you are saying, uh, so it wasn't working before, let's stick as it's not working? No, I'm saying that we didn't support it specifying the TLS certificate before, and I'm not sure anyone complained. Yeah, that's true. As I said, we have a workaround. Um... Anyway, I mean, I'm fine to keep it. I just no. Well, keeping this means anyway discussing. Uh, so kind of opening another issue and discussing if we want to uh, support mounting secret in the pods. So if we don't think that we want, we will go in that direction. Then I think that we can just close this and say, okay, we are not going not support this feature because it's needed, right? Or I don't, I, I can I'm, I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure I see that as so simple. Like you can basically just specify the secret here in the tracing section, like we do for broker listener certificate, like we do for certificates in OAuth configuration for connecting to the OAuth server and so on. So, yeah, having some generic functionality for mounting secrets could be an option how to solve it, but you can also have a very specific API designed mm. for this as part of the, of the tracing section. So I don't think you necessarily have to design it as a generic API. Yeah, that's a good point. We couldn't have a dedicated API in the tracing section. So well, I would say, I would say, in in any case, this would need a proposal. Yes, to how to exactly. Do it. Yes. So I would say, so if you and the others agree, I would leave this open with the help wanted, needs proposal, and see if someone is interested to add this. Otherwise, just use the workaround with the, the open telemetry collector in the middle and leave happy i mean i'm fine with it um the reason why i broke that nobody raised this for open tracing is that i'm not entirely convinced there will be hundreds of people jumping in to do this so 
I wonder if it will be still sitting there in several years, but yeah, it's not like we are built by GitHub per open issue or anything like that. And we will just close in uh, one year or two if no one jumps to work on it. So like this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's it for the triage. Yeah, that's the one we left for next time. Okay, Paolo, did you edit the incubation and the virtual conference or did yes. you copy it from last time or? No, no, just to provide a quick update. So I didn't remember, but I scrolled to the agenda last time. I don't think that I gave an update about the streams incubation. So uh, we we opened the PR about streams incubation uh, more than one year, more or less ago. And uh, yeah, there was actually nothing moving. Uh, I'm searching for the PR. Did you find it? Here it is. No. So, and uh, yeah, May 23 in 2022. So more than one year, one year and a half. And uh, nothing happened. So it seems that uh, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, we have got a new sponsor, uh, Matt Farina from SUS, and uh, he started the, 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 the draft doc for the due diligence. Uh, so he already engaged with us, uh, commented on, on this PR, uh, and it's so just to provide you an update that seems that things now are, uh, moving again, hopefully they will not stuck again in the future. So yeah, that was just an update, uh, about the incubation process moving forward. Let's hope for that. And um, the other one is um, regarding the streams virtual. Oh, sorry. Any question about uh, the incubation stuff? It seems not. So uh, the other one was uh, the idea of um, setting up the streams virtual conference. Um, last time uh, I was waiting for closing the kind of uh, polls that we started on on Slack on Twitter, uh, even I tried on LinkedIn, in order to try to understand uh, how many people are interested in to attend, even to submit proposals, etc. So even we have a big community, I would say, in terms of thousands of people, um, actually uh, the, the, um, the number of people answering the polls were not that great, less than 20 people on uh, all the platforms. Uh, anyway, uh, the answers was, so the answer was, uh, actually I will attend and, uh, in most of the cases and, uh, the majority even, um, uh, submitting a proposal. Um, so even if we didn't get great numbers, I do really think that we should try to organize this event. Uh, because anyway, you never know how things go. So if we are going to get a lot of people, if uh, things are going pretty bad, then we are going to, to have, yeah, uh, less attendees that you expect. Uh, but anyway, uh, having other people, uh, talking about stream Z, uh, would be great from the community. We will have recording of these sessions. So I will say that it's a good opportunity for StreamZ to kind of uh, developer advocacy as well. Uh, and, um, and yeah, so if there are no objections, uh, I would submit uh, the proposal for organizing this event uh, in six months because you have to submit uh, this request to CNCF and you have to wait for uh, their approval uh six months before the date so we can define a date that could be april may next year um i had a chat with the community manager in cncf and uh, she said that uh, there are no strong criterias why 
um, a request for a virtual um, uh, event should be uh, not accepted uh, because you know uh, there are no money involved, there are there is no sponsorship, so there are no not all the same problems that you have with the co-located event. Um, the only thing is that you should avoid to have conflicts with the CNCF official events uh, like a KubeCon or uh, some other co-located events or any other stuff organized by CNCF. So yeah, that was the 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 summary. Uh, so if anyone here on the call and in the community in general have any, so have any uh, objection, I will try to submit our request for having this virtual event next year. I'm not opposing it, but I wonder if you should also drop an email to the maintainers list and see yes. if someone objects there because with the time zones and so on, not all maintainers are able to join every call and so on. Yes, good point. Yeah, of course it will be not just me. So we need people uh, helping on organizing. So. I will send a request, uh, I can uh, drive main of the work, but I guess that the day of the conference anyway, we will need someone uh, maybe uh, helping on the platform uh, for uh, hosting the speakers and things like that. But it's too far away. Okay, yeah. Anyone has any questions to this or comments or anything? If not, does anyone have any other business to discuss? hearing nobody i guess that's it for this call so thanks everyone for joining and see you in uh, two weeks or one month depending on the time zones and timing and so on thanks thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Much. thank you folks bye, bye. bye.